Hi. Do you like my decorations? I am enrichment. Are you not enriched by my existence? You're welcome. Zoo Adventures today. <laughs> Decked out, apparently, in enrichment. You have a pitcher and feathers. Yeah. I guess there's a reason you have these? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a secret. Okay. Me and Sandra know what's happening, but you don't. Shocking. This is the way it is. So Zoo Adventures today is all about Arctic fox. Not going to look the way you think, either. It's kind of cool to be able to share that with. The North Carolina Zoo in Asheboro, North Carolina. Your Zoo Adventures team today. Steve's in front of the camera. I'm Megan. Who's behind the camera today? Sandra! Awesome. So let's uh let's go find out why let's she's Let's go fill the picture! Yeah! Find out why you're okay. Arctic Fox, hang tight. All righty, check some of this stuff out. Keep her Melissa in there. Dropping some enrichment in with our gray Arctic foxes. How cool is that? They're gray. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. We thought it'd be kind of fun to capture Melissa prepping some of the enrichment. You see her putting some food into those papers, wrapping them up, tying them up. Oh, we're going to hide something a little higher. We'll have to ask her what kind of behavior she's trying to elicit through all this enrichment. So, I wonder what else she's putting else out there. Oh. I'm interested in her eyes. Yeah, I saw that. I did notice that uh, he peed on at once. Yeah. But that's, you know, hey. Don't use this for your drink. No. no. So it's really cool. Look at this one over here. Hello, Fox. So, piles of ice. So, digital friends, think about what she's doing. Piles of ice some drips and drops of stuff in there. Wait, did, did she just throw trash in there? She did just throw trash in there, but I bet it's not trash. Looks like she's putting food in the paper, oh. crinkling it up a little bit and encouraging the foxes to do something else. Spreading it out all over the place, coming in, whoop, there goes Melissa's boots right past you. <laughs> so let's see what's happening. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Melissa said, oh, I forgot my bucket. <laughs> she had to come back and get her bucket. All right, digital friends, hold on tight. I'll be back in just a second to be able to talk to Melissa about what she was doing. How cool is that? Actually caught one digging in through the paper, try to find what treats were in there. Megan, can you tell what treat was in there? Um, whatever it is, it's almost gone. Whatever it is, it's almost gone. Right that quick. <laughs> that is awesome. What a great shot of this Arctic fox looking at, oh, maybe a berry? Oh, I do see some berry some colors. Some berry juice-ish yeah. stuff in there. Oh my goodness, look at those well, toenails. Nice. We'll talk about that in a sec. We're sure. But I think Keeper Melissa just came out. So, so they have names? Can't interrupt Melissa. She's already doing her thing. Mm-hmm. So you should see those really cool claws that you mentioned. They're amazing diggers. Oh. <laughs> what a beautiful, beautiful animal. You could, can you show them a little bit of the tuft of fur at the yes. back end? So we thought we'd come and do Arctic foxes with you all this time because we always think of Arctic foxes as this brilliant, bright white. That's what they are in the wintertime. They do change like complete color. But here, obviously, uh, these are the same foxes you can see when you come in the wintertime. I promise we don't switch out the fox for the season. This beautiful gray color <laughs> helps them blend in, helps them camouflage in with the rocks and stones in the summertime. Because where they live, it's not bright white all the time. It's going to be kind of blending in with this rocky stuff, so it's got a wonderful adaptation to have. Hi. Hi, Keeper Melissa. <laughs> Great job. Thanks. And they seem to be enjoying it. They're um, really interactive with enrichment, so we're very lucky with that. They're super curious. They mm -hmm. love causing mischief and mayhem. <laughs> When's the second time I've seen them pee on the ice? 
Yeah. So anything that doesn't smell like them, they are readily going to oh. scent mark. <laughs> um, so even like that. we don't have to do anything special with it. We can just bring something in that doesn't smell like them and they're going to be sniffing it, moving it, peeing on it. Well, you know, because um, that's what they do to mark their stuff. Interesting. Yep. Now, because one, because Fox A, and you're going to have to tell us who to yep. but I can't. So if Fox A yep. pees on it, yep. does Fox B completely leave it alone? Or are they like, you know what? I'm still going to take advantage of this. Uh, it depends on what the item is. So uh, a lot of times, Kaniki, who is the darker Fox right now, okay. is going to pee on everything. Um, regardless if Rizzo, who is the lighter Fox, pees on it, especially if it's something that had food in it. Gotcha. Um, and that's their way of being like, no, no, it's mine, not yours, mine. <laughs> um, they also cache a lot of stuff. So Rizzo, Rizzo is our big cacher. They do. Even here, they'll cache. Oh, yeah. Digital friends, you remember what cache <laughs> meant? Goes to the bank. Yes. <laughs> the bank of the freezer for later food. <laughs> Wrong kind of cash. <laughs> Jeez. So caching, burying and hiding for later. Yeah. I and guess you could bank that. I guess yeah, you could bank it. You're saving it, right? It's your savings account for when to help Megan for, for, for winter uh See, winter issues. Melissa gets it. Yeah. See, she it's their savings account. Yeah. They they're the ground the and the savings. ice is their bank. Yeah. We got this. Thanks. Yep. So okay. does that mean their assets are frozen? Yes. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> you just ruined the whole the whole thing. Oh. Sorry, I thought it was kind of cute. I mean, they pay their taxes, so I would hope they're not frozen. Mm, good point. Good point. That's for sure. <laughs> I do like the fact, so digital friends, I know some of you get a chance to come out from time to time. So in the summertime, Kaniki is the more dark of the two? Typically, yeah. It can it can be pretty dependent on just how well they shed out their oh, winter coat. Fair enough. But um, more often than not, Kaniki's usually the darker one. He is also the one, I feel like, that ends up with weird tufts of fur in places. <laughs> We've seen a couple of those. Yeah, yeah. Um, he also just um, climbed all the way up down the log yep. to the top. So that yep. was cool. Wow, that's cool. <laughs> They're big climbers. And then Rizzo over here. Yep. I was definitely up there mucking about, and there's no food. There's no other scent but me up there. Oh. But you can see, because I messed up there, she's like, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> what did well you put said. up here? So through you enrichment. So we know yes. all about enrichment. Our digital friends are amazing with enrichment. Quick definition for everybody who maybe isn't familiar Enrichment, anything that we're doing to encourage a natural type of behavior. Yep. So what behaviors were you hoping to increase by putting this amazing enrichment out? So I was looking uh, for foraging behaviors, which can be a lot of different things with the foxes. Foraging, okay. They can dig through stuff. They can scent track stuff. Ooh. So I put things in trees for them to use their sniffers to find. Oh, really? Um, they might pounce on things like the ice piles to get we through We saw a couple them. of those. Okay, yep. cool. So that's a behavior you're looking for. Yep. Okay. Any type of foraging behavior. And this also keeps them thinking. It keeps them busy. It keeps them active. Yeah, yeah. I love it. So. What were you putting? We, didn't, we saw you throwing those balls of paper yeah. around. We didn't think you were littering. <laughs> no, so some of them had nothing. Some oh, really? Of them, some of them had nothing? Yep. Yeah. You're tricky, you little brat. Sometimes. Some of them had poultry seasoning. Oh, cool. um, And then some of them did have their food. So oh, wow. some chow, some pinkies, maybe a berry got put in there. Ooh, um, sneaky devil. Yeah, and that's just, again, it's variation. So not all of them have food. They have to search through them. To find the food. That's great. When I see this? this yeah. Couple, hey, Megan, check this out. <laughs> um, look how organized our team is. Whoa. Look at look this. Look at the separated box of yeah. powder stuff. Well played. Herbs and seasonings. And we put some vanilla in one of the ice piles, too. Oh, oh really? You yeah. just put some that's vanilla? That's cool. So yeah. that's literally what they're sniffing and yeah. trying to um, change the scent to be theirs. Yep. Did I see you putting feathers out there? I did. I put puffin feathers. Oh, here's some puffin feathers. Yeah. yeah. So what? these smell like our birds. And that's something else that they really like to track and sniff. So some of these got put in trees. Some of these got put in one of the ice piles. It's just more things for them to interact with. Uh, so what would, That's in this instance, cool. what does interaction mean with a feather? They're going to sniff it. They're going to they're play gonna with it. Sniff it, probably bite at it. Okay. Most likely, we've actually seen Rizzo cash these because it does still really? elicit that food response of like, oh, I might be able to eat this, stuff it for later. Hide it later. Yep. She's pretty 
a pretty good cacher of items. Got you. Both approved and not approved. Oh, of course. Well, she is nice. Five, so, so she'll do what she'll sneak with yep. what she can do. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Oh. Do they? What do you see? I see the feather in the ice. <laughs> you saw the feather in the ice? Well, yep. there you go. They maybe I didn't see you put one in the ice. I put so a maybe, bunch in oh, there. Oh, you put some in there. Okay. Yep. Again, so that the piles are different. So oh. They can kind of change up where they go, what they're finding. Perfect idea. I have to ask you. Mm -hmm. This is summer. This we're taping this on July twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. Not too bad today. A little overcast. Temperature's not wicked hot yet. Yeah. Do you see behavior changes from the summer to the winter? Absolutely. Um, foxes are going to be a lot less active in the summer. Oh, really? Because it's just hotter. Oh. So especially Sounds middle like of the day, they're going to be sleeping a lot. They're going to be under rock crevices a lot. We give them more piles of ice. Um, they're also oh. going to be less active when we have more guests, which is typically summer. Oh, really? Okay. So they're going to stay further back, further away. Um, when it gets too loud, they just get a little more unsure of things. Sure, that's because that's that cacophony, that big bigness yeah. is. This isn't normal. This isn't how I usually be. And they can't hear as well, so they can't hear us. They can't hear oh. potential predators as well. Um, so when we're training them, when we're doing stuff with them, we do take that into account. Nice. That's why we might ask our guests to just be a little quieter, a little, bit. A little slower. Um, in the winter, they're pretty active. They're going to move. They're going to groove. They're going to do their thing. They are that. That's for sure. Yep. So interesting. And digital friends, surely that makes sense to you, <laughs> right? What do you do in the summertime? Are you out and about doing as much? No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Air conditioning. Air conditioning is a wonderful invention. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Harrier, I believe was his name. Good stuff. <laughs> so when will they be white again? So they're going to turn white um, for the winter, and I use quotations. <laughs> um, so we'll start to see them growing in their winter coat probably September or so. Oh, wow. Okay. And then they'll have that all the way through. I think they started molting or shedding. Uh, bird word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, you do both. I, so it's, it's legit. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, March or April. So they do hold on to it for oh, quite wow. a while. They stay white for a long time. Um, and Rizzo and Kaniki turn white, but if you've visited us before, you may have seen a previous fox that didn't. He turned gray. Yeah. Yep. Harley. Harley. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So. And that's just what there's difference in the animals, right? Some animals will have that color yeah. change, some will not. You're and more likely to wild. find the gray ones on um, shores, apparently, because there's less snow in the winter. Oh, sure. Yep. That makes sense. So it's a pretty neat little adaptation. Yeah, that is so neat. But ours get super fluffy and white. They are super fluffy. I mean, we got to see them this past winter. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are true fluff balls. Oh yeah. Crazy full. Yep. But it, I, that is definitely one of the things for the care that you all provide here. I mean, look at the enrichment. I know Megan's been showing <laughs> all the different types of enrichment in here. I see the mulch piles. Yep. You got the places, I'm assuming the logs are for training. You've got, you've got different substrates in there, substrates, things for them to walk in, dig in, play mm -hmm. on. The ice, the paper, it's crazy. We do try to keep them active, especially um, Miss Rizzo really likes to dig, part of that caching behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they also do, when they um, try to set up a den, they dig out really big, complex underground burrows, and she does that too. She'll Springtime, she digs like crazy. Mm -hmm. So we want her to dig in appropriate spots and not in inappropriate <laughs> spots where she can get into trouble. So we encourage her, encouraging her a little yes, bit. I love it. We try. There you go. <laughs> One of the coolest things I got to do, I got to go to Churchill, Canada, <laughs> rec not recently, but years ago. Yeah. Uh, you get to go. October. What are, you, are you excited? Super, super excited. That is so cool. <laughs> um, so excited. I have to admit, you go up for polar bears, we know for climate change action, you're going up through Polar Bears International. It's an amazing program. Yep. Learning what's going on with the climate, learning what's going, what's happening, and any, anything happening with the bears as well. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that one of my the coolest experiences was the Arctic fox. Yes. They came so close. Oh. Um, I've got amazing so video of one. But then they showed us the dens. Oh, yeah. You saw, and, and these dens are used not just a year or two. Multiple Some of these years. are generational dens. Yeah. That's crazy to me. And they're finding more 
more information, even they found a couple places where it's not just one male and one female. It'll be multiple males and really? females. Like yeah. A condo. Yeah. And it's, wow. that's just so cool to me because we've always thought they're one on one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes they're not. No, I did not know. That's yeah. awesome. That is really cool. New information. Yeah. Love it. And it's, so it's not just multi generational, it's multi family. Yep. Be really exciting. I'm super excited. Yeah, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a blast. <laughs> you're gonna have a blast. You're gonna come back, you're gonna teach us a lot more new stuff. Yes. And learn while Lots you're there. Of stuff. It's gonna be really cool. You're gonna have a great time. I wish you the best of search. Thank you. There as well. Melissa, thank you so much for coming. I know you've got a lot of other things. I'll give you your ground clothes and poultry <laughs> seasoning back. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sure they would not want me to take it with. Dear the friends, <laughs> thank you to Melissa. Melissa, anybody you wanna say hi to? Oh, no, I'm okay right now. You okay? I freeze up. We're so lucky that we've been, but you've been doing this for a long time. So you've said hi to a lot of people before, so it's 100% okay. So let's just wave. Just say it. Just everybody wave bye. to Melissa. Say hi, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Thanks again so much for time. I know your time is precious, so we'll let you get back to your thing. All right. We're going to talk about foxes a little bit longer. Have fun. Thanks, Melissa. Bye. See ya. Whew. That was cool. Literally. Ah, I get it. <laughs> I heard the door open. Yeah. And that's Rizzo, right? Or is that Kaniki? Yeah. That's Rizzo? Yep. Kaniki's up Kaniki the Klein. Line. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. She's looking. She's like, wait, are you coming back through There's here? There's a sound. I heard the sound. I thought it was interesting. Melissa said their sense of hearing isn't the best, but so, they're very tuned in to loud noises. Yeah. So I think maybe it's kind of like when you, you're in a loud concert and then it's like, mm. you have no idea what's going on right sure. beside me. No, so that's, that's when, point. like when they're doing training and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, having a lot of guests being in awe and excited sometimes doesn't, doesn't help the training. I bet it makes perfect sense. I love their eyes. Can you show them their eyes? I love the kind yes. of orangish color to the eyes. Yes. Big fluffy tail. They will wrap that tail around their face to keep themselves warm in the, in the wintertime. Kind of a nice little adaptation to have a built-in blanket. I wish I had a built-in blanket. Maybe, yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> and all those amazing ice piles that was so cool and to hear melissa talking about putting vanilla in them just a different kind of scent in there and then how about the uh the, the peeing on them definitely marking it's theirs it is theirs but they don't seem to really care too too much about that there's those claws again as as Melissa told us, they cache their food, even here at the zoo. They cache some of their food. Digging down, blending, burying it, even the enrichment. Megan said they bury those puffin feathers sometimes to cache it for investigation later. Kind of has that food ideal still on them. Looks like Rizzo just went in for a break mm -hmm. into their indoor habitat. Kaniki's still up top, but you can see the feathers there. Oh, hey, Rizzo, are you coming back? As Melissa told us, they're in that beautiful gray color right now. This is the summertime color. And Rizzo here staying nice and cool. He's eating the ice, see? Wouldn't you? Mm hmm I like crunchy ice. Me too. And this is that chewable ice. Yeah, it's this even is the better. Stuff. And we know there might be scents in there, might be vanilla in there. Checking things out. She said that she put feathers in the bottom of another pile. Yep, another pile. Like Here's mine. <laughs> mine, mine, mine. Checking some more out. This is just so much fun to watch. I like the so um, the black bowl over there. So that's got looks like some substrate that they can freely kind of dig. So like sand, maybe. Yeah, I'm looks guessing. Kind of a little bit, a little bit thicker sand or something. I'm not sure, but. I mean, that looks like a fun yeah. place to dig. The whole habitat looks like fun. Right, I mean, exactly. Is she coming back around? Nope. She might be able to come down here, though. Yeah, we can go down there. All right. Mm. She's in that dirt pile. Yeah, another digging spot. The paper that you see, digital friends, have getting not litter, not thrown in the bear keep by, by guests. Our guests are way too good to do that. But it is enrichment. Kaniki's still going around smelling each one, see what's going on. A Rizzo. 
I wanted to see Kanicki, I think. Oh, yeah. Megan just pointed out Kanicki for me. I don't know if you're going to be able to show him or not. Oh, we've already seen him. Right up here. Almost looks like a fuzzy rock. He's eyeballing us. You can no, see the white and the, the little black nose. Oh, my goodness. Look at that cuteness. Rizzo's napping. Can I take a nap? No. You've got to work. You're almost done. Gosh. Side note. July 25th. Cesar, our big elephant, our big male's birthday is today. You going to go celebrate? Yeah. I'm decked out in all my elephant stuff. You are decked out. You have a lot of earrings going on. Hey. Styling. So happy birthday to Cesar, even though this is airing a little bit late. Um, what, what, what do you have? We're having a skull session. Skull session? Some of you know skull? Maybe not. Anyway, Artie Fox skull. Who's behind the camera right now? Sandra! Yes! <laughs> it's, already, it's an example of an Arctic fox skull. It's a replica. Right size and shape, however. Nope. You all know Megan, but I should say, should give Megan a shout out. Wow, thanks. Well, you know. Eyes in front tells us it has some sort of carnivore escusness to it. Escusness? Don't think that was right. Can I say it anyway? Sure. All right, thanks. Um, but Arctic fox, carnivore, omnivore, herbivore. You tell me. Shh. Carnivore, <laughs> omnivore, herbivore in Arctic fox. Couple giveaways, so you should be eliminating one of those and leaning towards two of those. Super sharp. Super sharp. How the guest is coming in, Sandra? Oh, it's tape. I, sorry, forgot. Got a little carried away with my. I was really wondering what you were waiting for. Question. I was like, that's not. Yeah, not not quite yeah, right. Yeah. No. It's not Wednesday either. So. It's Monday. Yeah, it is. Airs on Wednesday. It should have been another hint that we're not live. We're not live. <laughs> <laughs> omnivore. This is, an, uh, this is an omnivore. <laughs> Does have the killing teeth up front. But as Melissa told us while she was putting enrichment out, berries and other foods are in some of the enrichment items she was giving. Yep. So it's pretty cool because uh, like the paper that's right behind us is actually, a, at first glance, it kind of looked a little bit like blood. Because it's got like a deep color to it. But it's purple for berries. It's purple for berries. Most of the diet is meat. So they're eating lemmings, they're eating voles, um, birds, bird eggs, baby birds, things like that. They're eating some carrion. They do foller. Foller? They do foller, poly bears. They you haven't lived here long enough for that. <laughs> Thank you. That's probably true. <laughs> they do follow polar bears. When they're out and about, and they're, they'll, leave, they'll eat what the polar bear leaves behind. Now, they're not doing it on purpose. Polar bears aren't killing and leaving food for them, but they will eat what's left behind sometimes from a polar bear. So they will scavenge as they need, and they do cache that food. Did you pick up on why they cache? I think it's so cool. Because they're, they're broke. They're digging, I'm sorry. <laughs> they're digging down into that permafrost, the permanently frozen ground. That's what they're digging down to. Same reason you use a refrigerator, same reason you use a freezer. They dig down that and they bury it because it keeps it fresh. Now, other fox might find it. So they're not digging only for themselves sometimes. Other fox might find it like a squirrel and nuts. Yeah. It's kind of neat. Okay. Have you seen the videos where like in the middle of the winter and it's like fresh snow and everything mm -hmm. where they jump up and just like whoosh? Mm-hmm. That is so cool. You see a lot with the red fox. You see a lot with the grays. I imagine they would do the same thing. I mean, it's a behavior. I mean, Their hearing isn't quite as good, maybe. I don't know. But I bet you're right. And they're trying to find a lemming under the ground or yeah. something. Absolutely. Yeah, that makes perfect the snow, sense. And then they're just <laughs> diving in. Nose first. Nice. Yeah. So, Arctic fox skull, omnivores, 
And uh, sleepy Rizzo. Relaxing Rizzo behind us. <laughs> Ice, ice, baby. Nice. Ah! Rizzo and Kaniki digging through the ice. Are you ready? There's something in the ice. Stop. Ready? And go. Whoa, whoa! Where did I go? I got one. Ha ho! Feather and ice. You got your stuff in your ice. There's stuff in your ice. You don't want to. It's a clover. Is it four leaf? Three leaf. Bad luck. <laughs> Enrichment and Arctic Fox. Awesome that they were able to set us up with some Please. ice. It is. Let's get Sandra. <laughs> Digital friends, I hope you enjoyed today's episode all about Arctic Fox today. Um, it was awesome to have Melissa with us sharing some information about the foxes and how cool... Uh, literally, <laughs> was the enrichment. That was exciting. Encouraging natural behavior. One of the things that the fox are trying to find are feathers. Like this. From the birds here at the zoo. It's a feather castle. It's a feather castle. Isn't that lovely? All right. <laughs> Digital friends, thank you for tuning in. We can't wait to share more zoo adventures with you in the future. Your zoo adventure team today. Steve was in front of the camera. With Megan, sometimes. Who's behind the camera one more time? You had to be really loud, Sandra. Hope I made it through there. Sandra did a good job. Zoo Adventure from the North Carolina Zoo in Asheboro, North Carolina. <laughs> the heart <laughs> of the state. We hope to see you again soon. Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. Be safe, you all. We have more playing to do. We're, we're going back to this. Bye.